first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, chairman of the General Sports Authority, president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, Zani Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended Bahrain's final football team training session at the Bahrain National Stadium ahead of their World Cup 26 qualifier against Indonesia, which is starting now. His Highness Sheikh Khaled bin Hamad encouraged the team to put forth their best efforts, making the most of their home advantage and fan support to secure victory. His Highness also expressed his full confidence in the players and the coaching team, commending their efforts in preparing the squad for this pivotal stage. He highlighted that the team's dedication and continuous preparation reflect the strong desire to meet the high expectations of Bahraini supporters. He urged the players to stay focused, follow the instructions of their coaching team and trust in the backing of their fans, assuming them, assuring them that the fans would be with them every step of the way. The chairman of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club High Committee, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, inaugurated the night lighting project at the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club. The project was implemented in accordance with the highest international quality standards to attract participants from around the globe and to further consolidate Bahrain's position as a hub for horse racing competitions. His Highness affirmed Bahrain's commitment to advancing its equestrian sector in line with the vision of His Majesty the King and with the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister. The Russia Equestrian and Horse Racing Club announced that night races will commence starting from the upcoming 24-25 season. That season will mark a significant shift in Bahrain's horse racing history, expanding the series of races in the fourth edition of the Bahrain International Championship to include 12 rounds, as well as the sixth edition of the Bahrain International Trophy. In addition, the upcoming season will see an increase in the number of local races, reflecting the club's commitment to enhancing both local and international competitions and fostering the development of equestrian sport in Bahrain. The Rashad Equestrian and Horse Racing Club's night lighting project involved the installation of 68 lighting towers, each with a power of 1,000 lux, strategically distributed across various areas of the track. The project also ensured the provision of the necessary energy to operate operate the system with high efficiency. These facility developments are designed to provide a distinguished racing environment, enhancing the position of the Rashid Equestrian and Horse Racing Club as a premier global sport destination.
The chairman of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, opened the second Bahrain Psychiatric Conference in the presence of the Minister of Health, Dr. Jalila bin Sayed Jawad Hassan. SCH chairman stressed the importance of continuing to provide high quality health services to all citizens and residents. He affirmed the role of government hospitals in organizing the conference and the importance of the participation of many health elites in order to provide an opportunity for workers in this sector to learn about the latest developments, diagnostic and therapeutic health techniques. Discussions elaborated on the finer details of psychology and psychotherapy and how to develop diagnostic and treatment tools, as well as the importance of consolidating community awareness of the importance of this medical field. The President of the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, Sheikh Abdurrahman bin Mohammed bin Rashid Al Khalifa, inaugurated the Khuroud Mohammed Jum'a Mosque in Diyar Al Muharraq, which was built at the expense of Fawzi Ahmed Kano. He stressed that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King, attaches special importance to mosques and places of worship as they are beacons of knowledge, virtue and obedience to the most gracious and welcoming meeting place for believers that enhances their unity and cohesion. He said that the houses of God have been, since ancient times, living and civilized witnesses to the bright Islamic history of Bahrain and its generous people and to the religious, scientific and social movement that has been and continues to contribute vitally and effectively to the prosperity projects. He praised the constant care given to the esteemed government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince Prime Minister to places of worship and their spread across Bahrain. He appreciated the role of benefactors in building and caring for houses of God, which reflects the spirit of goodness and giving among the generous Bahraini people, stressing the kingdom's pride in these generous contributions to serve their religion, country and society, which reflects good and generous spirit. He noted the initiative of the Honorable Fawzi Ahmed Kanu to adopt the construction of the Khulud Mohammed Jum'a Mosque and the social events hall attached to it. Fawzi Ahmed Kano meanwhile thanked the SCIA president for his kindness in opening this mosque, stressing that these projects come in recognition and love for all the sons of the homeland and a sincere expression of the national and social role and responsibility to serve the country. The Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications, Mohamed Al Kabi, attended the 28th meeting of the GCC Ministerial Committee for Posts and Telecommunications held in Qatar. The meeting reviewed the implementation of the decisions from the previous 27th meeting and discussed the outcome of the 30th meeting of the Committee of the Under Secretaries of Communications and Posts, which took place last September in Doha. The GCC General Secretariat presented the meeting agenda along with the recommendations from the Under Secretaries Committee and working groups for the Minister's approval. These recommendations included significant topics intended to strengthen integration and cooperation among GCC countries in the fields of communications and postal services. Proposals included improving digital infrastructure, developing joint policies to reduce service costs among GCC countries, and initiatives for cooperation in space, communications and postal services. The Minister of Industry and Commerce, Abdullah bin Adel Fakhru, participated as a keynote speaker in an event organized by the Bahrain India Society. Mr. Fakhru affirmed the historic long-standing relations between the two countries. He said that recent years saw a surge in two-way investments in real estate, banking and hospitality, while Indian investments in Bahrain have significantly impacted the country's manufacturing and information technology sectors. Mr. Fahru also noted that the relationship between Bahrain and India is a model of successful partnership affirming the mutual keenness to continue fostering innovation and entrepreneurship for the benefit of the two countries. The Minister of Youth Affairs, Rawan Bent Najib Taufiqi, held a meeting with ambassadors of friendly countries in addition to representatives of embassies accredited to Bahrain. Taufiqi stressed that the ministry is always endeavoring to accelerate the pace of youth work with different countries through their embassies to launch joint initiatives that contribute in developing the capabilities of Bahraini youth. 
The minister provided an overview of the youth programmes and events that the ministry will offer in the coming period. She outlined the opportunities available for embassies to enter into partnership with the ministry to design joint youth programmes and initiatives. At the end of the meeting, the minister expressed her appreciation for the positive interaction of the embassies. The Vice President of the Supreme Council for Women, SCWE, Dr. Sheikha Maryam bint Hassan Al Khalifa, held a dialogue session with members of the Executive Office of the Youth Committee at the Council's headquarters in Rafah. SCW Vice President conveyed to the attendees the greetings of Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, praising the efforts of the committee in organizing and launching various activities and events, especially its interaction with the celebration of the Silver Jubilee of His Majesty the King's accession to the throne. She listened to the visions of the members of the Youth Committee to develop work, enhance performance and achieve the desired results. She also praised the continuous efforts made by the members of the Youth Committee to consolidate the role for which the committee was established in 2003 by Her Royal Highness Princess Sabika and Ibrahim Al Khalifa, wife of His Majesty the King and President of the SCW, indicating that the committee is considered the first youth committee affiliated with a specialized council in women's affairs and that it receives support and attention from the President of the Supreme Council for Women. She stressed that Bahrain, with all its relevant institutions, pays special attention to the youth category at all levels to make them leaders in various fields and areas. She recommended that Bahraini youth move forward in adopting more initiatives based on the wise directives of His Majesty the King and His Majesty's unlimited belief in youth and their role in the renaissance and prosperity of the nation. SCW Secretary General Lulwa Awadi noted the Council's keenness to keep pace with the trends and interests of youth and integrate them into various development plans and initiatives undertaken by the Council. Member of the Youth Committee expressed their thanks and appreciation to the Council for giving them the opportunity to join the first committee of, this, of its kind in the region. Bahrain's parliamentary division delegation attended the coordination meeting between Gulf parliaments, which was held today remotely. The meeting was in preparation for participation of the parliamentary delegation in the 149th IPU General Assembly to be held in Geneva, Switzerland from the 13th to the 17th of this month. Bahrain's delegation affirmed the continuation of efforts to consolidate the path of parliamentary cooperation with GCC legislative councils and parliaments and support joint visions during international parliamentary meetings reflecting the deep-rooted Gulf relations. The delegation stressed supporting the emergency item proposed by the Executive Committee of the Arab Parliamentary Union at its latest meeting after making the amendment submitted to it, which is related to the Palestinian issue. The representatives of the GCC legislatures and parliaments agreed to continue holding coordination meetings to discuss topics of interest to the GCC and exchange views in order to formulate a unified GCC parliamentary vision. Bahrain's parliamentary division was represented at the GCC coordination meeting by first deputy speaker of the representative council, MP Abdel Nabi Salman Ahmed, member of the Shura council, Dr. Bassam Ismail Al bin Mohammed, MP Hassan Ibrahim Hassan, and MP Dr. Mahdi Abdel Aziz Shuwaykh. Sustainability Forum Middle East hosted a roundtable on MENA's economic transition, seizing green opportunities for growth and human capital development. The session brought together business leaders, in addition to climate and sustainability experts from across the region, to address issues critical to the MENA region's transition to low-carbon world and future. The talks explored the region's potential to achieve ambitious climate goals while ensuring a successful economic transition that will unlock significant growth and opportunity. The session focused on the role of decarbonization in driving economic diversification, job creation and human capital development as regional economies work towards achieving their zero carbon emissions targets for 2050 to 2060. 
Bahrain has always placed the human rights file at the top of its priorities and made it a solid foundation and basis for the pillars of progress and development. The fourth midterm voluntary report, which Bahrain reviewed during the 57th session of the Human Rights Council at the Palais des Nations in Geneva, is a testament to Bahrain's seriousness and interest in this file. We have more in this report. In order to enhance and continue efforts to promote human rights and preserve human dignity, Bahrain continues its achievements in this field and demonstrates its success with figures and facts that reflect the effort made. Bahrain announced during the 57th session of the Human Rights Council the implementation of 128 recommendations within its comprehensive review of the fourth midterm voluntary report out of 172 recommendations accepted by the Kingdom, to translate through numbers the extent of the increasing progress and the distinguished record in the field of promoting and respecting human rights in various fields. In light of the prosperous era and the comprehensive development process of His Majesty the King, and with the support and follow-up of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, since 2008, Bahrain has been leading the world as it is the first country to present its report before the Human Rights Council during that period and continues its participation in this unique process that provides opportunities to announce the measures taken by countries to improve procedures and overcome the challenges facing the enjoyment of human rights. Bahrain confirms through its global steps its full belief in respecting human rights the rule of law, justice, and the rights of solidarity in establishing the values of peaceful coexistence and supporting sustainable development. His Majesty King Hamad's Future Schools project is one of the most important educational projects which was launched in 2009 by direct order of His Majesty the King. The project became part of the Ministry of Education's program and activities required by the transition to e-learning. Over the past years, and specifically since the launch of His Majesty King Hamad's Future Schools project, Bahrain schools have witnessed a leap in the quality of the educational process as this project has contributed significantly to the development of the educational system. This project has become a major part of the Ministry of Education's various programs and activities that are directly linked to e-transformation and digital empowerment, which has had a positive impact on teachers and students in terms of the quality of the educational process. Schools are benefiting from this digital transformation by moving to virtual experiences through VR labs as well as creating an interactive environment and encouraging direct communication between teachers and students. The project has achieved many tangible positive results that have enhanced the ability of students to communicate with the world beyond the walls of schools to benefit from global expertise in various fields. The Future Schools project has created a flexible and technologically advanced learning environment that has initiated a remarkable awareness among students and contributed to the development of their abilities and creative skills. And before we end the news bulletin, uh, let's take a look at the latest business news in this report. Following the indicators published by the Ministry of Finance and National Economy as part of the Kingdom of Bahrain's quarterly economic report for the second quarter of 2024, it is clear that the Kingdom's economic sector is on the rise, especially since Bahrain's economy today is diversified, balanced and sustainable. According to the latest report for the second quarter of 2024, the GDP grew by 1.3% at constant prices on an annualized basis, supported by 2.8% growth in non-oil activities. The report highlighted the performance of economic activities as non-oil activities contributed to driving growth levels, with its contribution to GDP at constant prices reaching 85.2% during the second quarter of 2024. In the past few years, many goals have been implemented ahead of schedule within the Economic Recovery Plan and the priorities of the government's work program, which indicates the efficiency and quality of implementation. Among the sectors that witnessed significant development are the financial projects sector, tourism and trade, in addition to real estate activities and business services, which witness economic growth and development to be one of the most important tributaries of the non-oil economy. 
This strong recovery comes in conjunction with the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to begin consultations to formulate Bahrain's economic vision 2050, which reflects the depth of the benefit achieved from the plan and its role in accelerating the pace of economic recovery in the kingdom, most notably those non-oil sectors whose indicators continue to rise.